Kyle here from All Media Reviews, here to do uh, Albums of the Year 1975. Um, so thank you for subscribing if you subscribed recently. Again, just mentioned, just please subscribe if you've not. I'm going to try doing these all the way, if, I, if, if it works out all the way into the present uh, year. I mean, I'm going to do a 2023 Albums of the Year list uh, sometime in the next few weeks. But um, probably we'll go through March, maybe even April. And that's the thing is around that time some stuff I may be thinking about doing with the channel. I don't know. But anyway, if all goes well this winter and everything. So I also would like to do a movies of the year thing, which I was thinking about doing last summer and made some lists, but I, I never really got around to doing it on YouTube. So, but anyway, starting out 19, we're doing 1975 today. Um, so I, I got the collage here, probably right here. Uh, number 23, Hall & Oates is, um, I don't think it's their debut album, but it's just Hall and Oates or Daryl Hall and John Oates. Um, uh, the most the self it's self self titled um, album, I believe. Yeah, it's just it's just Daryl Hall and John Oates. Um, but it features uh, the most most well known song is Sarah Smile. But you know they were doing more overt, overt soul stuff. I don't know. I mean, my wife's a huge fan. She has a copy over there, but I didn't bother trying to tr to um, track it down. I may do that in the future. I don't know. So, so that's number twenty three. Number twenty two, um, Young Americans from David Bowie. This is the f maybe the first album. I think it's the first album after the Ziggy Stardust stuff, or maybe the second. He had Aladdin saying, I don't know. Is it, this is like maybe it was a shift for him, of course, because he was a chameleon and he kind of. Um, was past the Ziggy Stardust persona, but it has songs like Fame and the title track. Um, he does a cover of um, Across the Universe, which isn't that great, but the saxophone's nice on this album, but I, I'm not feeling it that much. Anyway, that's number 22. Uh, number 21, um, Peter and the Wolf, the soundtrack from Jack Lancaster and Robin Lumley. Robin Lumley, who would, you know, also go on to do brand acts and some other stuff. The one that they followed this with is of a lot more to say about in the next year, I believe. <laughs> but um, I never per purchased this thing. Uh, it has some other renowned names, like Bill Bruford's on it, Jean-Luc Ponty. Um, it is a soundtrack. I mean, it's not a soundtrack to the film exactly, but they the Peter and the Wolf theme, which you know I saw as a kid... It was done by Disney. It was a short film. This this is this is interesting because it's like taking jazz fusion and riffing mostly off the theme. I mean, there's a narrator too, which I kind of get. I I kind of get this impression that listening to this thing over time would just kind of be a little bit of a chore. You have to be in the right mood for it at best, and um, it has some moments. Um, there's a couple of tracks. On here, I heard it on Spotify, um, but you know, I, I just having known what they did after this. I mean, I'm not a huge Brand X fan either, but um, they were trying to they were finding their footing. I mean, my favorites are Peter's theme, um, Rock and Roll Celebrations, like the only proper like rock song um, besides the the and the final theme, but. Um, Duck and Bird is nice. I mean, it's yeah, it's the story of Peter and the Wolf, you know. So they, but they're, they're kind of milking. They're kind of extending. They're, they're almost trying to make more out of something that maybe didn't lend to being more. I mean, it's the jazz fusion brand X proto. Although again, the drummer wasn't. I think Phil was on here. Phil, but Bill Bruford also, get one of the drummer anyway. Number twenty one, number twenty. Uh, Steve Howe, the f first one I can show. Steve Howe's Beginnings, his debut album. Of course, the Yes Guys. Chris Squire had released um, uh, Fish Shot of what That was the same year. Well, you know, we'll find out about that. But the Yes guys were all doing their solo albums. Johnny Anderson would do Elias of Sand Hill. Rick Wakeman had done Six Wives of Henry VIII or whatever. Um, seven, whatever it is the year before. But I like this album, even though the singing is obviously not favorable. But um, the guitar work is great. So that's about the best thing I can say. I paid $2.50 for it back in 2011 anyway um number 20 number 19 uh katie lides from steely dan which has black friday does you know um 
you know, follow, following up um, Pretzel Logic, you know, does include the services of Michael McDonald. Um, I think, you know, again, they were they were producing good albums with, with every album had some level of some kind of hits. Seely Dan at that point. I don't think that they, I think they'd still go on to do better work, but Katie Light, I know, is a favorite of some people. Um, I really like the last track, Throw the throw Back the Little Ones. I don't know, it didn't really have as many hits. Bad Sneakers is nice, you know, and Chain Lightning, I think of the, 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 the Rush song, of course, but um, yeah, it's a decent record. I think it was on that Rolling Stone list of 100 albums from 67 to 87. I, I like, there's albums, of course, like Asia and stuff, I think they, they did better, but still pretty good. You know, in Steely Dan, there's there's always a quality to their work, especially in the 70s at least. Um, if they had albums, I think they held them into the 80s, they did, but. So that's number 19, number 18, one of these nights from the Eagles. I'm not much, that big of an Eagles fan, I was just looking at, this is the Eagles' fourth album. Uh, of course, it features the title track, um, and it also features... That the most noteworthy track on it is Journey of the Sorcerer, which I was reminded it was included on the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy soundtrack, the, the radio series. Um, Eagles doing prog in a sense, instrumental work. It also has some other other hits like Take It to the Limit and um, Lying Eyes. The country rock, I mean, I love Nesmith much better than the Eagles, but it's not a bad record. I mean, I, I think it's better than Hotel California, actually, so sacrilege or whatever i know joe walsh wasn't on this but anyway um basically journey of the sorcerer deems this to be maybe even could have been a little higher it's a terrific piece so um number that's number 18 number 17 super tramps crisis what crisis which doesn't really feature many of their hits oddly enough even though you know they had most records they had in the 70s had hit super tramp but um you know, I've, I've only listened to this album a few times, but I, I like it, and you know, generally the worst Super Tramp music is better than other music. That, it does have, um, was it Sister Moonshine and Ain't, Ain't Nobody But Me? Um, Ladies, another one I like. But, I mean, none of these tracks were included on any of their compilations. They didn't, you know, they had the six minute and 15 seconds Another Man's Woman. Um, but, you know... I don't think it's a bad record. I think if I if it had more notable songs, I might put it a little higher. But um, you know, it's Super Tramp again. You know, had to be included somewhere, right? Um, number seventeen, number sixteen, Ten CCs, the original soundtrack, which features their most well-known song, "I'm Not in Love." Um, and as I'm talking about in the '73 video um, or the '74 video, rather, get my videos mixed up. Um, 10CC are a band that, you know, it's like, their best stuff is really good. Sometimes they're a little out there, and they, they, they remind me of a bunch of different bands, but um, I, think I, I think I've slept on them, and I could become a bigger fan. Like, cheap music I really loved. Um, but, um, yeah, I mean, this is, again, the one that, that did have their one radio hit. I mean, not one. They had a few other radio hits, but this is their most well-known song, I'm Not In Love. I think it might have been used in the, the Gardens of the Galaxy soundtrack. Um... But, um, yeah, I mean, that sweet, what was it called? The, the Same Night in Paris. Une nuit à Paris, that sweet's like an eight-minute piece. That's arguably very progressive, the second movement. Like, I don't really, some of the songs like Life is a Minestrone, I'm not crazy about, but, but Flying Junk, Good News, um, Blackmail. You know, it, it's, it, they're experimental. It's like very art pop-ish, you know, and, there's enough going on where it's not standard pop. That's why I like it. And they are good singers. It's just a matter of whether they're trying certain things that don't always work or not, like talking about Minestrone in a song. So, Number 16. Number 15, uh, the first of a couple Kansas albums I don't have on CD or vinyl, unfortunately. Um, Mask, which includes, um, I believe, Mysteries and Mayhem and... Um, Icarus, Born on Wings of Steel, and Pinnacle. So, I mean, it, it's not as renowned as some of the other classic Kansas albums, but it's still well-known enough. Um, Child of Innocence also was a, 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 a fan favorite. And the, the Seven Minute, All the World. Yeah, I mean, Kansas, you know, they they sound like yes, an awful lot like yes sometimes, but sometimes they have their own thing going with the, the lead violin and Steve Walsh's vocals and... Um, 
Yeah, I mean, the 70s Kansas are pretty much can't miss it. They're, they're all really good records. So, um, anyway, that's number, what, 15? Number 14. All right, so this record, of course, this album, I, I thought I actually may have found on vinyl, but I didn't. I need to find it. And of course, I had the CD and still have misplaced it. I have the jewel case here. This is Eric Johnson's band, jazz fusion band Electromagnets, which I haven't listened to in a long time, but I always liked this. Um, you know, he was pretty young when he did this, but um, yeah, it's jazz fusion. I can't much say it's a little more electronic, you could say, even though you think J Eric Johnson, you think, I mean, it's not exactly like Return to Forever, but he's a more of a blues guitarist, but he was bringing in, you know, blues into, it's like a blues, almost like Jeff Beck. That's, if they compare it to one thing, it would be like a Jeff Beck group thing. Anyway, Electromagnets from 19, uh, number uh, number 14. Number 13, uh, I, I had this album on cassette tape and pretty sure I had it on um, on CD at one point. I don't think I ever got the vinyl. Styx is Equinox, um, which features maybe my favorite Styx song, Sweet Madam Blue. Um but, you know, the 70s, the mid to late 70s sticks, I was into back in the 90s, 20 years ago. I was listening to that stuff a lot. 20, well, 20, that'd be 30 years ago, actually. Um, you know, it's, it's Light Up is a favorite. Lorelei. Um, let's see, Born for Adventure is another one. And Midnight Ride. Those less so. But, um, yeah, I mean, just for Sweet Madam Blue alone, this needs to be on the list and needs to be relatively high. It's... It's them doing accessible prog for whatever, for lack of a better word to put it. Um, so I, th I think Equinox yeah, was the album after that Tommy Shaw joined. Anyway, um, number 13. Number 12. So we got first of a couple appearances from Rush. Fly by Night. Of course, features By Time and the Snow Dog and um, Anthem. I always love Eric Andrick. Best I Can. Underrated song. Um, the title track, of course, maybe the most famous song on here. Rivendell, in the end, it's a kind of a blues number. It's a little bit like here again, kind of upped it up a little bit. Um, beneath, between, behind, very energetic. I, I, I like every song on here, but you know, knowing what Rush has done, and you know, it doesn't have as many major Rush songs as some of the records, but it's an iconic cover, of course. Maybe second or third most famous Rush cover, maybe to Moving Pictures in 2112. Um, Number 12, number 11, Voyage of the Acolyte from Steve Hackett, which features the vocals of both um, Phil Collins and is it, I think, Annette, Pe is it Annette Peacock or is it, um, who's the other guest singer on here? It's another kind of, we talked about that, uh, Sally Oldfield rather, Mike Oldfield's uh, sister or whatever. Ace of Wands is probably, you know, I think of this album for that and Star of Sirius, um, Shadow of the Hierophant. You know, it's sort of the lost Genesis album. That this came out while he was still with Genesis, of course, in 75, after Peter had left. But um, Hands of the Priestess, Part 1 and 2. I haven't listened to this album in a long time, but, you know, I was liking this. I would say I like it as much as the, the Phil period Genesis, you know, in the 70s, most, most of those albums. I don't like it as much as the Gabriel stuff, but, you know, most, most Genesis fans that love Gabriel don't, uh, even though they're, they're still a really big fan. It's, it's my favorite Hackett record, too. All right, so number 10, we're getting to the top 10 finally. Bruce Springsteen's Born to Run, which features my favorite Bruce Springsteen song, him doing Prague in my mind, Jungle Land, the last track. But the title track has been played to death. I still don't mind it. I'm not been worn out as much by it as some. It has Thunder Road, which is another favorite, one of my earliest favorite Springsteen songs. She's the One, 10th Avenue Freeze, freeze Out, um, Meeting Across the River. It's not a perfect record, but... Um, this is the version on Columbia. I, if I'm going to one Springsteen record, it frequently is the one I, I think of. You know, and I, I prefer it over anything in the 80s he did, even though I like a lot of the 80s stuff too. So, anyway, that's number 10. Number 9, um, another Kansas appearance, Song from America, which I was revisiting that today, and, man, that, that's, that album is really good. I mean, number 9 might be a little bit low for it. Um, the title track, the full-length title track, which is like 9 whatever it is, nine or ten minutes. Um, Lamplight Symphony is another highlight. Um, and then the closing epic, which, um, you know, I'll just pull up in a minute here, is the uh, the other biggest highlight on this record. Um, in Income in come Out, Mudro, Him to the, At the Atman. Yeah, that's terrific. Every track, though, works. I mean, the musicianship, the use of the violin, the dynamics, sort of, 
You know, I mean, if I'm choosing one track, I'd probably still choose the song for America. The, the opening track, Down the Road, might be the worst track on you. <laughs> Lamplight Symphony is just beautiful, so... Yeah, and this is a great... In some ways, I'm, I think this might be my favorite Kansas album song for America. So anyway, that's number nine. Number eight, so we see Return of Forever again return with their second record with Al Di Miola, No Mystery, in the classic lineup, which includes the title track, you know, and the celebration suite, which... Thinking of Kansas has always reminded me of Kansas with the patches that Chick was using. Um, but it has, what is it, Day Ride, uh, Flight of the Newborn, which is an LD Miola piece, um, excerpt from the first movement of heavy metal. <laughs> you know, that's the last piece on the second, on the first side. Yeah, I mean, it's no mystery. It's, you know, the, the, the classic Return of Forever lineup, you know, with LD Miola is. Those are my most people that love Return of Forever. That's their favorite, other than my that friend of mine at, at the radio station who preferred Bill Connors. But so that's number eight. Number seven, we do see Chris out, Chris Squire's Fish Out of Water, the lone Chris Squire solo record. Which, as I talked about in the, the vinyl A to Z, my favorites are um, uh, was it Silently Fallen and um, Hold Out Your Hand. I mean, it, it sounds like yes. It sounds a lot like yes with Chris doing the lead vocals, but the compositions are great. Very symphonic, you know. Um, you know, I don't know. I, yes, I knew occasionally did play some of this stuff, but yeah, this is a terrific record. 1A or 1B among the Yes solo records. I like this more than Beginnings, even though I like Beginnings from Steve Howell. This that came out the same year, so number seven. Number six, we have Jethro Tull return after War Child not being the biggest highlight for me with Minstrel in the Gallery, which has uh, always been a favorite of mine. It features uh, Baker Street Music, like, was it like the 17-minute piece? Um... And the title track, Cold Wind of Valhalla, is another favorite on this. It's terrific. It's heavy. It's how much heavier. It's not as progressive, but I mean, you count the. There's enough prog in it. Um, I always love the, the cover art too. <laughs> um, but yeah, this is uh, the post Passion Play records. I think this is still my go-to. Um, but you know, they'll they'll show up again. Don't worry. Um, on these lists, number f okay. So we're now we're up to number five. You know, some people would say well, this should go higher, but it's number five. Pink Floyd's Wish You Were Here, which I have. This version is the colored vinyl. I think I've showed it a few times, but I, I've said my piece on this many times. My favorite piece on, my favorite part of this is Welcome to Sheen. I like the Shine New Grazy Diamond Suite. I got a little worn out by it hearing Transatlantic do it, and um, I still like it. I wish It Were Here, the title track, and Have a Cigar are nice. I know that, what is it, Have a Cigar features um, the services of um, Roy Harper, I believe. Um, I, I like this record more than The Dark Side of the Moon, and I like it better than The Wall. I do not like it better than some of the other records in the 70s, though. So, But anyway, so it's still a great record. I don't think it's necessarily overrated, but it's not you know, necessarily underrated either. It's about right, about accurately rated. Um, so number, what is it, number five, number five, number four, Rush, the second album from Rush, Caress of Steel. The Necromancer's a fantastic epic. You know, it has that interval pattern that I've always sort of heard of the sunrise in that jam session from uh, one of the jams from Blind Faith. Um, the Fountain of Lamneth, great suite, even though it's a little odd, quirky, it spans the gamut. I know the Rush guys don't love it. You know, they don't look back at it, but I think it works. There's one part that actually reminds me of, um, was it Jungle Land or Thunder Road? That dun 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 dun, and this came out the same year, which is weird. Um, that chord progression. Um, and I like, um, I like, I've always liked Lakeside Park and um, Bastille Day. I think I'm going bald is sort of a novelty track, but yeah, I love the cover art. I mean, it's it's their first real prog album to me, you know, anyway. Even though it's still not, it's it's gotten more respect in the last decade, but I still think Crest of Steel is overlooked. So that's number five. Number four, that was number four, rather, that was number four, rather. Uh, number three. My favorite Led Zeppelin record, the top record, the double album, Physical Graffiti, which features a, a bunch of tracks I absolutely adore, including My Time of Dying and In the Light, and the, the guitar solo, especially on Ten Years Gone, is just, I guess, Goosebumps, Trample on Her Foot, The Rover, um, you know, Night Flight. There's just so, I, I, I adore this record, but there's so many good records this year that it kind of didn't finish on top. It probably would have, you know, when I was in high school, <laughs> if I was taking albums from 1975. So, yeah, Physical Graffiti is. To me, Led Zeppelin's masterpiece because it's a double that it has that much more work. And they, I don't know, even though some of the stuff was still bluesy, you know, I'm, even the sort of lesser tracks like Brownie R and um, Sick Again's always been a, a track. It's been a track that's grown on me over the years. Cashmere, of course, I've heard a million times. 
I still like it. I, I, I've grown to like and prefer Kevin Gilbert's version more, but anyway, Custard Pie. There's just there's a just a long list of songs on this album. It's just so good. I um, It's just a great collection of songs. So, number two, the crowning achievement for me for Renaissance, their, their album uh, Songs from Sherazad, uh, which features the you know, the, or Sherazad, is it just Sher I always get the mixed up, it's, it's actually called Sherazad and Other Stories, rather, but it features the, the, the epic on the 20 plus minute epic, uh, Songs from Sherazad, which is fantastic. It doesn't get cheesy or melodramatic, the, the pieces are just well thought out, but it also includes probably my favorite Renaissance song, trip, A Trip to the Fair, that's what kind of won me over and I became a fan of them. Vultures Fly High and Ocean Gypsy also are terrific, I mean, it's, this is basically a perfect record, I got the, uh, the, the original master recording, you know, mobile fidelity version, uh, of course. Um, and number one, as their, as their, as my favorite and their, their masterpiece. So we have a bunch of masterpiece bands. Greatest works came out in 75 to me. Renaissance, Blood Zeppelin and Queen, uh, Night at the Opera, which includes, you can include Born to Run that, that list actually. Uh, my favorite song from Queen, um, their most progressive in a lot of, in, in a lot of ways, at least, um, the Prophet song. You know, Bohemian Rhapsody I've heard a million times, but, you know, I, I'm not as sick of it as I am even of, um, you know, there's some of their other songs even, like We Will Rock You and uh, We Are the Champions. Um, you know, but it has I'm in Love With My Car and, um, uh, what's the other one? Uh, 39's Great, Sweet Lady, Seaside Rendezvous. It's very dynamic, very varied, the different singers. You have Brian May, you have Roger Taylor, and you have, of course, Freddie. Um... I'm love, what's, what's the other? Death on Two Legs is the one I'm not thinking of. Um, but, you know, Love of My Life is great. It's just so well composed. The, the, the sonic clarity, just the flow of it. It's just, there's so many things to enjoy about it. I, it's a perfect record. So, anyway, that's my list from 1975. Again, uh, please comment, like, and subscribe, and give me your list, and you'll see you next time.